Hey, my name is Chris Brennan, and this is a little tutorial for setting up your preferences in the astrology software program called Astro Gold for Mac OS. So let's go ahead and jump uh, right into it. So for those of you that don't know, of course, Astro Gold is uh, software that you can get for Mac OS that'll run on like a, a MacBook or other Mac Macintosh desktop. Um, you can get it at astrogold.io, and there is a promo code, which is astropodcast15, to get a 15% discount. So let's jump into the program. Here is, uh, I have a chart that's cast for the current moment. So the first thing you want to do when you get Astrogold and you in install it is you want to go up to the preferences icon, which is up in the top right corner, and this brings up all of your preferences, all of the core preferences in the program. So the first thing you want to do is um, set your default city and state or country. Uh, for me, that's Denver, Colorado, and then it'll automatically look up the latitude and longitude and then hit save as default, and it will save that as the default location. So that's important because whatever the default location is, Will be um, the location that it'll cast charts for if you uh, go to select to create a new chart and then hit current transits, it'll cast a chart for your current location and time uh, as long as you set that location correctly uh, there in the preferences. All right, so back to the preferences. Um, it has some, a bunch of cool little options for color scheme, like you can do a dark color scheme if you want to or if you you know, you're working on charts late at night and you want it to not like keep you up by being so bright. Um, you can also set it to auto. Uh, I usually just leave it on the light one, but it's totally up to you. Um, other than that, let's switch to the displayed tab. So the displayed tab will uh, let you select which points you want to have displayed in charts or not displayed. So if for some reason you want to get rid of all the inner planets, you just deselect those and you can see them disappear or reappear right there on the chart display. So um, I have all of the basic like traditional planets as well as the modern planets um, sort of visible in my charts. I also have the north and south node visible. Since I use whole sign houses, I make it so that the ascendant and the midheaven are visible. And sometimes also I like to have the IC um, or the descendant in there as well. It can be kind of useful in a whole sign house context since those points are like floating sensitive points. Um, the rest of these are either asteroids. So for example, there's Vesta or there's Ceres. Um, this is Vulcan, which I think is like a hypothetical planet or point that may or may not exist. There's other hypothetical planets in here from Uranian astrology, um, which you can turn on or off if you want to, um, as well as a few other things. I think this is like the Aries point or the Libra point. Um, all right, so that's that. So once you have that, um, you may want to create a name for it to save your displayed points and to have that be sort of like your default. So I've just created the name Astrology Podcast Displayed Points, and that's kind of my like default name for those so that I can um, bring them up or I could switch between that and other ones um, pretty easily. Next, let's go to the Aspected tab. So this is very similar. It looks very similar to the last one, except here it allows you to choose which planets or points uh, that you draw aspects to in the chart. Or if there's any planets that you or points in the chart that you don't want it to draw aspects to, you can select or deselect those. So for me, I just have all of the planets selected to draw aspects between those. Um, but I don't have, for example, the no north and south nodes selected. I don't really need to look at aspects to those personally. I primarily just pay attention to the, if they're like conjoining something. Additionally, some people may or may not want to have the Ascendant or the Midheaven um, having aspects to it. 
Um, for me, I don't necessarily need that, so that's something that I turn off. But you're up; to, you can choose whatever you want. Um, I think planets is like a default one in there that you can select, and that may be the default when you open it up. Although I can't quite remember, but whatever profile it is, once you create it, you can just save it as whatever profile and give it a name. All right, let's go to the next tab, which is the aspects tab. So in this tab, it will basically let you um, select what types of aspects you use. So I think the default was standard. So if you open up standard, you'll see that it uses I think this is what it comes with when you you open the program, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and it has like the conjunction, the opposition, the trine, the square, and the sextile. Um, but if I'm remembering correctly, usually it has like a bunch of other stuff um, by default as well, including minor aspects like the semi-square, sesquisquare, semi-sextile, quincunx, and um, a few other things like parallels or contraparallels and things like that. So I don't really use minor aspects, I just use major aspects. So as a result of that, I went in and I um, deselected all of the, the minor aspects and only selected the, uh, the five primary aspects from traditional astrology, which are the conjunction, the opposition, the trine, the square, and the sextile. Okay, so then you want to save that. I've just titled that like crispaspects.asp and saved it. Uh, that's good. All right. All right. And then uh, let's go to the next tab. So this is the wheels tab where things get a little bit more complicated because there's more options. Um, one of the things that's it's kind of a nice feature is it has this um, auto ring color option where it'll color code different wheels for up to four, um, I guess, quad quad reel wheels. So if you use a bi wheel, then the natal wheel will have this kind of um, orange inner section. If you use a bi wheel with transits, it'll show it as green. For progressions, it'll show it with a light blue, and for directions, a light red. So I like it to more or less be clear in the center in the ring instead of have colors. So I uncheck that personally. You're free to do whatever you want. Um, it has different wheel colors. So the classic gold is the default, but there's also a light gold and light green and um, blue and what have you, uh, which are all pretty cool. I go with the classic gold. You can also adjust the tint. So I think it has no tint initially. I usually turn it way down to something more like that. So there's just like a little bit of tint. But again, that's just an that's an aesthetic preference. And as we get more and more into this, these are just different options in terms of aesthetics. So just below that, it has the options though that, that to me are a little bit more important in terms of the aesthetics, which is the colors for different things like the glyphs and the signs. So if you click planets, um, it's got different options for different colors for the planets. Like normally, it comes with a basic set of color-coded glyphs. So for me. I don't usually like to color code my glyphs. Like it has Mars as red and Neptune is like, I don't know, green or Uranus is blue, but that's all kind of distracting to me. So I usually go for an all black set of glyphs and hit save. Um, you can pick different color schemes if you want, depending on your, your choices and depending on your preferences. So more power to you. You can also pick the sign glyphs, and this one's kind of important to me, and it took me a while to go through. I think um, there's like a classic set or like a standard set, which I think is the elements one, which is the default, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, I didn't like that color scheme as much because it does a kind of um, muted green color for the earth signs and more of like a bluish color a light blue for the air signs. 
I'm kind of used to some of the color coding that I first learned with from Astro.com that usually has the air signs as more of an orangish color. So that's why I went with something more like this. Now, if you want to change the colors, you have to do it sign by sign. You have to click on the sign and it'll pull up a dialogue. And there's different options for different um, color profiles from like crayons to developer to Apple. For me, the WebSafe colors are the easiest one to select because you can look it up according to the hex number, which is like a six digit code, which color codes um, different colors and different shades of the entire color spectrum. And so once you figure out one that you like, so this one, for example, for this shade of red that I'm using for the fire signs is FF00. FF0000. So if you then go to like another sign, you can just type, click the WebSafe colors and type uh, the same thing, FF0000, and it'll bring up that color. So that's what I did. And then I just like replicate that with all of them once you find the right shade for all of the triplicities and all the elements. So once you've done that, you're going to want to save it and give it like a specific name. I'm calling mine the Astrology Podcast Sign Colors, and then hit save in your folder, and then you're all set. So that was one that was probably one of the more important ones for me to get the shades of the colors down, just because it helps me to get used to the chart and to be able to see all of the sign placements easily and quickly. Um, for sign fills, I don't really think I use that, so you can skip that. For aspects, it'll let you color code what color the aspects are, and for that, I just have like the easy aspects as a light blue, as a blue, and the hard aspects as like a red color. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, other things you can select whether you want it to show the aspect lines in the center of the wheel. Um, proportional houses, I think that's mainly relevant if you're using quadrant houses, so that's not really an issue here for me using whole sign houses. Um, I usually turn the aspect glyphs off, but some people find this useful, so you can turn the aspect glyphs in the center of the aspect on or off. Uh, shadowed glyphs, for some reason this comes as a default, where it turns the shadowed glyphs on by default. I don't really like the look of that as much aesthetically for some reason, so I always turn the shadowed glyphs off, so it's just pretty straightforward, a glyph with no shadow behind it. And what else? Thicker aspect lines for tighter orbs. I do think that's useful because it can help you to quickly, the lines are pretty thin otherwise, and when you click that, um, it can help you to identify some aspects that are much closer than others at a glance. And um, you can, this other one, fainter aspect lines for looser orbs, is kind of an option. I usually keep it off um, just so that the aspect lines are primarily just thick and you can kind of see them between the planets. Um, other than that, um, it has a midpoint thing, but since I don't use dials or midpoints, that's not really something I mess with. Uh, let's go on to the next tab. All right, the next one after that. Uh, let me close this screen. Next one after that is the calculations tab. So this one's actually kind of important because it gives your preferences for default calculations for a bunch of technical things. So one of those things is what type of zodiac you want to use and whether you want to use the tropical zodiac, which is typically what most Western astrologers use, and I think that's the default, versus if you want to use one of the sidereal zodiacs, especially if you practice either Western sidereal astrology or Vedic astrology, Indian astrology, you could select like the Lahiri Ayanamsha or some other sidereal Ayanamshas. It'll also let you select the draconic zodiac, which is a thing I have to do a podcast on at some point, uh, but I'm reluctant to. I'm going to select tropical since I use the tropical zodiac. For house system, it lets you select your default house system. So for that, I use whole sign houses. 
but it also has all of the quadrant houses as well as um, a number of different options. So Placidus, for example, a lot of people use Placidus as their quadrant house. Um, it also has like Regio Montanus or Equal House or pretty much all of the classic ones. I will just select whole site and houses here. Um, it's probably a good idea if you want to use that house system that you've selected as your default consistently to click apply when opening charts um, and apply when opening charts. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty uh, probably a good idea to have that selected. That way it'll apply your house system across the board consistently to each chart that you open. All right, let's look at some of the other options. Another option is whether you want to use the true node or the mean node. Different astrologers use different things. I use the true node, um, and I think that's also what's used, for example, on astro.com or astrodienst. For the part of fortune, uh, I think it's important to set that to use a different calculation for day or night charts, and I talk about that in my book, like what the rationale is for switching the calculation depending on if it's day or night. There's some astrologers that follow Ptolemy and other astrologers who only use the day calculation for the lot of fortune. Uh, so that's up to you, but I'd prefer switching it based on whether it's a day or night chart. Uh, Black Moon, Lilith, I don't really have a opinion on, and I do not have an opinion on Parallax Moon either. Down here, it's got some different uh, options for traditional astrology. So first, whether you want to use the Egyptian terms from authors like Dorotheus and Valens, or whether you want to use the uh, version of the terms, the bounds that's from Ptolemy. So I have that set to Egyptian. Uh, for the triplicity rulers, again, whether you want to use the more widespread Dorothean triplicity rulers, or whether you want to use the ones from Lily or from Ptolemy. Um, I think most traditional astrologers probably at this point will use the Dorothean set. Um, dignity, mutual reception. So MR stands for mutual reception. I use mutual receptions included, but it's not a big deal. And then finally, Fredaria is a is like a time lord technique from the medieval tradition. You can set that to standard or nodal variant. I don't really have a strong opinion about that, so I'm going to skip that. Um, and finally, progressions. You can pick different types of progressions. Again, this is a little bit more advanced, so I'm going to skip that and also skip the composite houses thing. So that's pretty much it for the calculations page. Um, so finally, it has a bunch of different options for different dynamic uh, reports that you can generate. This gets into a little bit more complex stuff that's not really useful or necessary to mess with for most people, so I think I'm going to skip it over. And that's pretty much it then at that point for setting up your preferences and getting started with Astro Gold. You're pretty much on your way once you've done that. So um, I did have some like special settings here, especially for like, for example, the color scheme for um the signs of the zodiac. So if anybody would like me to upload this color scheme or to make it available below this video, I guess just let me know. In the comments section below this video, and then maybe I'll I'll make that available in the description box below, just in case there's anybody that wants to copy some of the same settings that I have in my uh, my installation of Astro Gold. But otherwise, I think once you've done that, you're pretty much set and you're up and running with the program and can start casting charts like a pro in no time. So good luck using the program. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below, or if you'd like to see more tutorials like this for this program or other astrology software programs, and I'll see what I can do about making some in the future. So thanks for watching. Uh, good luck with the program, and I'll see you again next time.